In this video, what I want to talk about is the relationship between a scale factor and the volumes of those objects. So we're going to discuss the volume scale factor. In a previous video, I've already talked about the area scale factor. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend that you watch that one first. I will touch on it a little bit in this video, but not much. So today we're just going to talk about the volume scale factor. When I'm talking about scale factor, what I want to talk about is how would I turn this smaller rectangular prism into the larger rectangular prism. When we start with the linear measurements, when I go from four centimeters to eight centimeters, what I notice is that I am multiplying by two to get to any of these measurements. Just like from two to four, I multiply by two, and from three to six, I am also multiplying by two. So what we can say about this object as we're scaling it up is that we're scaling it by a scale factor of two. And we tend to use, or I guess I tend to use K to represent my scale factor. So if k is equal to 2, this is going to be the linear scale factor. So all linear measurements, things like length, width, and height, are all going to be uh, increased by a scale of 2. What we talked about in the last video is how does this affect the area? So let's just say I was going to look at the surface area just for the front rectangle. So for this one here, and then how does that correspond to the area of the front of the rectangle for the larger one. So if I look at the area of the smaller rectangular prism, the area is going to be equal to A8. So let's call this A and let's call this B. So the area of A would be equal to two times four, which would give us eight centimeters squared. If I'm looking at the area of B, again, length times width, we've got four times eight. And in this case, what we're going to get is 32 centimeters squared. So what I noticed about the area from the smaller rectangular prism to the larger rectangular prism is that the area is increasing by a factor of four. In the last video, we talked about how does that relate? Well, what we know about the area scale factor then is that this would be represented by k squared, and that would be four. So we can just take our linear scale factor and square it, and we would get our area scale factor. What we want to discuss now is how does this now affect the volume? How, what does the volume increase by? So let's start by finding the volume of both shapes. So we'll look at the volume of A, and that will be equal to two times three times four, and that will give us 24 centimeters cubed. Now if I wanna look at the volume of B, here we'll have four times six times eight, and what we're gonna get here when we multiply those together is we're going to get 192 centimeters cubed. So similarly, we want to look at the relationship. How is my volume going from 24 to 192? What we notice is that it's increasing by a factor of 8. And so what we can say then is that our volume scale factor is equal to 8. How does that relate back to the linear scale factor? Well, what I notice is that from the linear scale factor, from linear to area, I had to square it and I got to 4. From the linear to the volume scale factor, I'm going from two to eight. And how I would do that is by cubing. So what I can also say is that K cubed is equal to eight. And this is going to be my volume scale factor. So to really just to drive this idea home, if I had a cube that had a length of one unit and I'm increasing that to a cube that has a size of three units, here if I look at just the linear measurements to go from one to three, I'd have to multiply by three which means that k is equal to three. If I wanted to know how much larger the volume is going to be from the smaller cube to the larger cube, then what I could do is just cube my linear scale factor, and this is going to give me the volume scale factor. So three cubed would be equal to 27. So what we should notice is that the volume between these two things is different by a scale factor of 27. Well, the volume of a cube is just length times width times height. So one times one times one is one, unit cubed. When I look at the volume of the larger cube, I get length times width times height, which is three times three times three, which in then in fact is 27 cubic units. So what we're doing here is if I already know what it's going increasing by in terms of its linear scale factor, I also know what it will increase by in terms of its volume. Let's look at a few examples. The smaller tank in the photograph has a capacity of 1400 meters cubed, and the larger tank has a capacity of 4725 meters cubed. During the refining process, both tanks are filled with oil from a pumping station at the same rate. How many times longer will it take to fill the larger tank than it will to take to fill the smaller tank? All right, first what we want to do is we've been given two volumes, and so I want to compare those. 
What we know is that if we have our volume, that we're going to represent this as k cubed. And what I'm going to do is take the larger volume, and I'm going to divide it by the smaller volume. When we divide this out, what we're going to get for an answer here is 3.375. So this is our answer. We already know that the smaller tank, or sorry, that the larger tank is 3.375 times larger, so it would take that much longer to fill as well. So our final answer is 3.375 times longer. Next, let's think about how many times greater is the radius of the larger tank than the radius of the smaller tank. So what we could do here is the long way of doing this is thinking about the volume formula for a sphere, which is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We could input both volumes, manipulate this formula, figure out the radius for each, and then see how much larger one is in comparison to the other. However, we already have our volume scale factor. What we know is that the volume scale factor is going to be equal to the linear scale factor cubed. So if I already know what the volume scale factor is, and I can take that from my answer above, now all I need to do is figure out what k is. So the opposite of cubing something would be cube rooting. So I'm just going to cube root 3.375, and that's going to give us our k value. And this is going to tell us how much larger the radius of one sphere is in comparison to the other. When I take the cube root of this number, what I get as a result is 1.5. What this means is that the radius of the larger sphere is 1.5 times larger than the radius of the smaller sphere. Let's try one more example. So our next question will be when we come up with the volume for the hexagonal prism. So what's really nice about knowing the scale factor is that I don't need to know the formulas for the volume of an octagonal prism. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. I could probably very easily look it up. However, I don't know what it is. And if I didn't have any way of figuring it out, then I'd be kind of stuck. What's nice about knowing the scale factor is that I don't need to know this formula at all. All I need to know is what is this being scaled up by, and then I can also then, of course, that would correspond to its volume. So what we have here is two linear measurements. I know that the base of the smaller one is 2.5 centimeters, and the larger one is 17.4. So my linear scale factor is going to be when I divide one by the other. So we'll go 17.4 divided by 2.5. What this is going to give us as a decimal is 6.96. So the smaller octagonal prism, or sorry, not octagonal, hexagonal, the hexagonal prism is being increased by a linear scale factor of 6.96. What we want to know is how does that increase the volume? So we want to cube this factor, and that's going to tell me how much the volume is increasing by. So when I cube 6.96, I get 337.153. There's a few decimal places after that. So this is going to be the scale that the volume increases by. All I really need to do now is take the old volume and increase it by that factor, and it's going to tell me the new volume. So we'll go 10, 000, sorry, 1050 multiplied by 337.153. We'll use all the decimal points that we've been given, and this is going to tell us the volume of the larger hexagonal prism. So let's multiply those together. What we'll get here is 354,000 and 11, and there's a few decimal places after this, and this is now going to be in centimeters cubed. We can round that if we need to. Let's go maybe to the most, the nearest centimeter cubed. So therefore, my volume is 354,011 cubic centimeters. I hope this video helps you with the volume scale factor. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.